Welcome, fellow expeditionists. If you're a subscriber, then you've probably already seen the individual adventures from our recent Colorado expedition. Now sit back and see what it's like to go on a road trip with us as we share not just the hiking adventures, but the scenic drives, the old towns, our boondocking locations, some roadside exploring, and all the behind the scenes shenanigans on this full length feature of Colorado, no reservations. fellow expeditionists it is time for road trip 2020 that's right Colorado no reservations we are on the road right now we are heading out of Indiana we are crossing through central Illinois we're going through northern Missouri and southern Nebraska and we'll be spending tonight in northeast Colorado before we make our way on to Rocky Mountain National Park we had 11 days for this expedition. Subtract two to three days for driving, giving us about nine days of good adventure time. We had no set itinerary and no reservations. Just a father and son on the road, driving through rainstorms, dodging semis, and watching the landscape slowly change from the lush fields of the Midwest to the arid and mountainous landscapes of Colorado. Good morning, folks. It is 4.30 a.m. here in Colorado. We spent the night here in Wiggins, and uh, now we are going to head on towards the mountains. And uh, 4.30 a.m. ain't so bad, and consider that would be 6.30 back in Indiana. This is when I start getting excited. You know, it doesn't matter what mountain range we're going to, whether it's the Smoky Mountains, the Grand Tetons, or the Rockies. When you first start getting those major views of that mountain, you're like, ah, you start getting excited seeing it, you know, because you've been on all this flat land for so long, yep. and all of a sudden, boom, this mountain just rising out of nowhere. It always just gets me excited to get into them, doesn't it? Yeah. Continue straight to stay on Colorado 7 West, 5th Avenue. I see a bad block. Yep. Our main objective this first day in Colorado was to check out a few national forest campgrounds that supposedly had first come, first serve sites available. The drive through the mountains alone was worth the effort, even if our search was ultimately fruitless. Campground full. I'm guessing I'll be having a few level. It's a very small area. All right, here's the situation, folks. We uh, checked in three different campgrounds within Roosevelt National Forest, just south of Rocky Mountain National Park. All of them on the reservation system had listed uh, first come, first serve sites. Because we could never, for the last two months, I've been watching the reservations and we could never get anything more than one night here and one night there. And if we're going to stay in a campground at all, it's all or nothing because it's we don't have time to be taking down tents and moving from campground to campground. So, anyway, they told us um, that they've pretty much gotten rid of all the first come, first serve regardless of what recreation.gov says, because of the COVID-19 and social distancing. That way they have less people in the campgrounds, which is fine. That is why we have a bed in the back of our SUV here. We can stealth camp all we want. It's always an alternative. It's just nice to have a base camp at a campground sometimes. But right now there's a fire ban in Colorado regardless. So no real point for going to a campground if I can't even have a campfire. So we'll, 
nobody's stealth camping this whole, at least during the first few nights. And that's all right. We're going out for a hike right now. We're in Colorado. We're in the Rocky Mountains. Let's do it, catfish. Let's do it. Love these mountain roads. Hey, fellow expeditionists. We're in Roosevelt National Forest, Colorado. We're in the Sugarloaf Mountain District. We're hiking to Bald Mountain. Even at 9,194 feet, this is a pretty amazing view, isn't it, Catfish? Yeah, it sure is. That's right. Check out this. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. 360. All right, that is our little adventure here today, going up Bald Mountain, our very first official hike in Colorado. Thanks to the All Trails app, which just happened to recommend some things close to where we were at. Hey there, folks. I mentioned earlier something about us stealth camping in Roosevelt National Forest, and that is what we're doing. We just found us a nice pull-off here in the forest, off of a forest road. I'll show you how we can so easily stealth camp. We are not setting up tents. There's a fire ban, so we can't do any kind of uh, campfires or anything. So we want to be able to get out of here as quickly as possible in the morning because we want to get to the trailheads that we want to hike before everybody else. So we planned this whole thing in a manner that gets us out of our campsite as early as possible. So as you see, the Subaru has been converted for camping. We have our bed on top. Underneath we have supplies, food, water, shoes, drinks. It's a pretty convenient system. It's all about trying to keep things as organized as possible because it is really easy to let your vehicle just become a huge unorganized mess. So underneath these sections we have our clothes and up top in the cargo box we have most of our camping equipment in case we did go to a campground. Our tents, our supplies, such like that, um, as well as kitchen stuff. So we're pretty much set up to be fully self-sufficient here. So of course one of the disadvantages of finding places along the National Forest is there's often private land mixed in with the National Forest land and so it's kind of difficult sometimes to find where those lines are at such as coming down this forest road we've seen signs posted further down saying private land and then we get down to this area and uh, there's nothing posted so another convenient thing about the way we stealth camp is if for some reason somebody did come along and tell us we couldn't stay there it's so easy for us to close up and head out and find us another spot. I should let you guys know too if you ever want to try stealth camping a couple of apps that are really good helpers there is freecampsites.net that is a good one that will give you at least a head start on finding free places and uh, also iOverlander is another app it is more for your four-wheeling people that have vehicles that can definitely go in areas that your standard vehicle can't go but both of those between them we can always find somewhere can't we catfish yes we can well slight change of plans while catfish and i were checking out that cool little uh, pull off we thought we had back there we discovered some private property signs so just to play it safe we vacated that spot and uh, took off a few more miles down the road to a spot that's got, I don't know, probably a dozen campsites in it, official, actual campsites. There's just dispersed camping here in Roosevelt National Forest, and there's only one other person tonight that is in this area. So we know we're safe here. Yep. So we're just kind of exploring some of the uh, campsites here in this dispersed camping area. And like I say there's only one other camper in here right now. But a lot of the area is trashed back on the other side from, I would just have to say, gun enthusiasts. Because everything is shot all to hell. 
and shell casings are everywhere. So apparently they like to come out here and do some target practicing and uh, skeet shooting apparently because there's skeet pieces everywhere back there. But check this out. This is a full-on stone-built toilet. You just adjust the seat how you need to and you do your business and hopefully you take it out with you because I don't see anything in there so apparently it is a at least somebody knows how to I mean it could just be a bench but uh, I take that with the hole in it being a little backcountry toilet but then you also have things like some kind of artistry going on on this side at least I assume it's the artistry maybe it's something occult who knows maybe it's a maybe it's a uh, offering to Bigfoot or maybe it's aliens so while I'm here preparing stuff for tomorrow's adventures catfish is wandering around the rocks and all the trees trying to find new species of lichen and moss and fungi and sticks and anything he can find Find anything new, catfish? These things are everywhere. What are they? I think lichens. Some kind of lichens? Yeah. Different than the kinds we see in Indiana? For sure. For sure, yeah. Yep, this is what makes catfish happy. Hey, fellow expeditionists. We are at Glacier Gorge at Rocky Mountain National Park. That's right, we are in the Bear Lake region and we are going to be hiking one of Rocky Mountain's most scenic hikes all the way up to Sky Pond. So we uh, dispersed camp last night in the Roosevelt National Forest. You know, we got up at 4 a.m. We arrived at the trailhead today at 5.30 a.m. and the Glacier Gorge Trailhead parking already was so full there's only two spots left when we arrived so a uh, busy busy place very popular area lots of great trails and I can see why hold up but I was gonna uh, I'll be the same way coming back <laughs> well here we are catfish we made it we made it to sky pond high five yeah buddy Whew, what an adventure, huh? Yes. <sighs> Just think, technically it's only halfway done because we still have to go all the way back. Mm -hmm. We just did our first amazing hike in the Rocky Mountain National Park all the way up to Sky Pond and everything in between. A little bit wore out now, though. How about you, Catfish? Sure I am. Yeah, so it's still pretty early in the day. It's only like 1.30. I think uh, our entire hike today was seven hours and that was close to 10 miles plus about a 40 minute lunch break there at the end of our hike at the sky pond so anyway we're just kind of relaxing and cruising and I think we're just going to kind of cruise across Trail Ridge Road and uh, just see some of the sights and just kind of relax. Trail Ridge Road is the premier Rocky Mountain National Park scenic drive traveling 48 miles from Estes Park in the east to Grand Lake in the west. The road rises more than 4,000 feet in a matter of minutes, with 11 miles above tree line, reaching a peak height of nearly 12,200 feet above sea level. Catfish and I had driven the road our previous time in the park in 2018, but this time we decided to stop at the Alpine Visitor Center to see the views and check out the weird plant life in the tundra. After leaving Alpine Visitor Center, the windy road made its way down toward Grand Lake and Colorado River headwaters. This is where we hoped to see some wildlife, and we were not disappointed.
Well, folks, we got off the Trail Ridge Road and just cruising around, we decided to check out the community of Grand Lake Village. And it's a cute little place, very touristy. We thought, since we're here, we better check out the lake, right? Yeah. I wasn't aware that the Ghostbusters were in town. So one thing you won't find in Grand Lake Village is chain restaurants or businesses. These are all locally owned shops. Well, Grand Lake Village is a cute little village and it'd probably be a nice place to vacation or something. But uh, we tried to get some pizza and it was an hour and a half wait. So time for us to move on. Well, folks, I may have uh, screwed up this time. Uh, this time we came into the Arapaho National Forest and the iOverlander app recommended this particular area because this uh, forest road, four, number four forest road, is just dozens upon dozens of dispersed camping sites and free campground areas and all that. So it seemed perfect because it's not that far from the Grand Lake area, which is where we were hoping to hike tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> so we come up here, and of course it is July 3rd. This is the July 4th weekend, and this place is packed out with partiers. Yes. Very much so. There are ATVs flying around everywhere, hooping and hollering all over the place. And uh, we just found one little pull off off to the side of the road here that we claimed. I don't even know if it's a spot that you're really supposed to camp in or not, but it's a pull off, and we're in it, and that's all we need. But <laughs> whether or not we get any sleep is another question, huh, buddy? Yeah. And we thought we would uh, slip down the hillside and explore the woods as we often do, but what do you think that is, catfish? Looks like bones. Well, yeah, it definitely looks like bones. Of what is the question? I'd say like a deer or an elk. Well, you could be right. Those are some pretty big vertebrae. Yeah, we can hardly hear ourselves think when the ATVs fly by. <laughs> <laughs> so not only are the ATVs flying around on the forest road where we're pulled off at, but directly down the hill from where we're at is an actual ATV trail. Lucky us. Yippee. <laughs> well, good morning, folks. It's about 4.30 a.m. here in Colorado. Uh, it was actually a fairly peaceful night of sleeping, actually, um, here in the Arapaho National Forest, um, close to the Stillwater OHV area. That's why there's so many uh, ATVs. So um, if the iOverlander app had mentioned that, we would have known. But it don't matter. We got some decent sleep. And now we are ready to hit the road and move on to the next trails and next, uh, next adventures. Hello fellow expeditionists, we are at the North Inlet Trailhead here in Rocky Mountain National Park. We are hiking to Cascade Falls. Well, we just got done hiking the uh, Cascade Falls Trail, and it was a beautiful trail. But uh, we kind of had our fill for the moment, the Rocky Mountains, and especially the July 4th crowds that are going on right now today. So uh, we're heading south Colorado. We've got a long list of things to potentially see and do, but most of them are several hours away from the Rocky Mountain National Park. So yep. on the road we go.
had a long list of potential adventures, places to see, and nowhere near enough time to do them all. We had intentions of climbing a 14er, though hadn't yet decided which one, and we needed more time in the high elevation to make sure we were adjusted to the altitude. So I picked our next destination, which was a good four hour drive southwest, found a potential dispersed camping site in the area, and we set out across this amazing landscape. But let me tell you, Google Maps could not have prepared us for the awesome scenery that we were driving through. We are in Eagle, Colorado, taking a little break. Uh, we really, we're really beat. We really need a zero day here coming up. So I uh, had to stop and take a little rest and check out this cool bridge in the, uh, the Eagle River. One of the most scenic sections of interstate in America is I-70 through Glenwood Canyon. The canyon spans about 12 miles with canyon walls reaching 1,300 feet high above the Colorado River. Unfortunately, it was raining while we drove through, but still quite a unique drive. I just gotta say, it's not fair, Colorado. Everywhere I look, it's like amazing. Now in Gunnison National Forest, hoping to find us a spot to boondock for the night. It's July 4th, so good chance nothing will be available. All we can do is try. Well, here we are folks, we are in the Gunnison National Forest in Colorado, dispersed camping tonight. There's a spot right below, I believe it is Marcelina Mountain. What do you think of our uh, camping situation here, Catfish? The well, site looks pretty cool. It is, isn't it? It's got lots of sunflowers. <laughs> right. When there's a fire ban in your state and you really want some hot dogs at camp, you improvise. Fish and I are back out on the road. We absolutely loved camping here in Gunnison National Forest. 
that was a great little find. Found that on the iOverland app on this area. And yeah, it was perfect. Right in the middle of the mountains. It was an adventure, wasn't it, Catfish? It sure was. We got up this morning about 6 a.m. It was 43 degrees. Made us some, some scrambled eggs and packed up. And now it's 9 o'clock and it's 70 some degrees. So yeah, it warms up quick once that sun gets up there. You've arrived. From the lush mountain tops of Gunnison National Forest to the very dry arid section of central Colorado to the Black Canyon of the Gunnison. What do we got out here, catfish? Looks like a canyon. Yeah, it does. Alright, so we just drove into the Black Canyon of the Gunnison to the north rim. Not really knowing what to expect because frankly I didn't do much studying on the area. really easy to get a sense of vertigo up here. You get up here on these rocks, you feel solid, and then you're like right beside this canyon. It's like 2,000 feet deep. So the Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. It's really cool views. It's really super unique. I'm glad we went and checked it out. A little disappointed though, we really wanted to go back over to the South Rim, stop and check out the Visitor Center, and maybe a couple of viewpoints on that side. But it is almost an 80 mile drive from the North Rim Drive to get to the South Rim. And uh, I don't know that we wanted to dedicate that much time just to go over to the Visitor Center and a couple more viewpoints. So we're on the road again. So one of the crazy things about getting out into these backwoods areas of Colorado is the towns and all are few and far between, which means your gas stations are few and far between. So um, we were at a quarter of a tank back there at the Black Canyon of the Gunnison. So we backtracked a little bit to the little town of Crawford to find a gas station. And the signs there literally say, next gas station 80 miles. So you really gotta stay on top of that gas. But regardless, also in this area is a spot called Needle Rock uh, Natural Area. So we thought we we're so close. Let's go check this thing out. Hey fellow expeditionists, we're at Needle Rock Natural Area. That's right, this is on BLM land here in Colorado. We just happened to cross it uh, while we were in the area going elsewhere and I thought, you know what, let's check this out. Think catfish. Pretty cool. Well, that is Needle Rock Natural Area here near Crawford, Colorado. Well, folks, it was a hot one day today out there at the uh, Black Canyon of the Gunnison, as well as that Needles Rock uh, Natural Area. Really cool places. Just amazing scenery everywhere we drive to. And uh, we were on to our next destination only to find out one of the main things that we wanted to see would be closed by the time we got there. So we decided to uh, pull it up short, do a little bit of relaxing tonight. And uh, by relaxing we mean actually getting us a motel room, getting ourselves cleaned up and uh, well rested and uh, offload some video onto the computers and all that good fun stuff. So yeah. And good morning, folks. Back on the road. Spent the night at the Days Inn in Montrose, Colorado. Last night, it was all that we needed. Got a good night's rest. Got showered up. Got all our videos loaded off onto computers and such. So it's kind of a nice evening to relax and recoup and hit the road and do it again. Heading south, back into the mountains. Welcome to Ure. Cool town. All right, 
right, we are in Ure, Colorado. This is kind of like the northern terminus of the million dollar highway. But we are stopped here and uh, investigating some stuff. Right now we're going to check out Box Canyon. You know the funny thing, you could stay here in this region right here and probably spend two weeks and still not see and do everything just in this little area. Of course, we just passed through and tried to get the best bits that fit our uh, interests, don't we? Yeah. And you know, hikers here are almost in the minority. You would think all these mountains and everything, we'd be the majority, but I really think it's more to do with OHV people, you know, ATVs, Jeepers, um, equestrian, horse riders, and all that. We're kind of in the minority here. It's just a mecca for outdoor adventure. Hey, fellow expeditionists, we're in Ure, Colorado. And we're hiking Box Canyon Falls. That is Box Canyon Falls here in Ure, Colorado. All right, Box Canyon was a pretty cool little city park, and um, that's all we're seeing in Ure today. I know there's a lot more in this area. The plan for today is pretty much just driving Million Dollar Highway and stopping at anything that we see worthwhile, huh, Catfish? Yeah. So this is definitely the definition of just winging it. We are cruising this amazing drive. The Million Dollar Highway stretches about 25 miles between the old mining towns of Uray, Colorado to Silverton, Colorado. It is one of the most scenic and dangerous roads in the state as it winds through the mountains with hairpin curves, narrow lanes, steep cliffs, and no guardrails. The original road was a toll road built by Otto Mears in 1883 as a way to connect the many mining operations within the area as some of the terrain was too steep for a railroad. We're already to the town of Silverton. Didn't take us as long as I expected. This is an old school mining town here. Cool places, huh, Catfish? It sure is. It really feels like you're in the Old West, doesn't it? It sure does. All right, Catfish and I decided uh, to stop at Silverton, this old western town it looks like, old western mining town. To just kind of explore and, and get some fresh air and walk around and check it out, huh Catfish? Yeah. You know, I've been to a lot of touristy towns that try to fit a theme, but this place truly looks authentic. It really looks how you would expect a turn of the century town to look, late 1800s, early 1900s. Oh, check it out, catfish. It's the old Silverton Jail, 1883. Guess we better throw you in. Oh, no. Let's check that out, catfish. It's still got the rails in the middle of the road. Oh, cool. Shady Lady. What do you think, catfish? Something to eat? Shit. The Shady Lady Saloon was built in 1888 and was the last operating brothel in Silverton, up until Madame Jew Fanny closed it down in 1947. The atmosphere of this restaurant and bar gives a 1920s vibe, and they don't shy away from their sordid history. 
This was probably my favorite place to eat on our entire Colorado trip. Some shady lady catfish. Looking good, huh? Yep. All right, eating at the Silverton's last brothel. All right, Silverton was a really cool old mining town. Definitely keeps the, uh, still has that vibe to it. Million Dollar Highway has been every bit as beautiful as what I would have expected it to be. But uh, definitely this area is all about the four-wheeling. And in the winter time, it'd be all about the skiing. It's kind of like yesterday, some of the places we passed through was all about the river rafting, you know. So Colorado's got it all. Pinkerton Hot Springs. It's one of those little oddball side of the road attractions. A hot spring that has formed all of this, I assume some kind of calcite deposits. It's literally on the side of the road. You really get a good look at the spring. And all of this deposits down the side. As Catfish mentioned, this looks like something you'd see more in Yellowstone than you would down here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. well, what do you think of the Pinkerton Hot Springs, Catfish? Pretty weird. Pretty weird, huh? Yeah. Did you check to see if the water was really hot? I put my hand over to feel if I had paid or not, but I didn't really, I don't think it was really seemed that hot. Well, we've pretty much finished the uh, Million Dollar Highway, and it definitely has some amazing views. We're now stuck in traffic in Durango. Well folks, we are at Mesa Verde National Park. I have always wanted to visit Mesa Verde. I've always wanted to go down and see the uh, cool cliff dwellings and everything up close. But that's not going to happen this time. Thanks to the whole pandemic thing, most of this park is shut down. There's literally only two trails apparently that are open for visitation. You're all set. Would you like a map, sir? Yeah. I know there's only like two trails we can take, but I still want a map. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. Even though there's only two trails you can hike, you'll still be able to see a lot of the different cliff dwellings from the overlooks. Level That's what we were just thinking. We looked at the maps down there. I said, I think we can still see most of it. Mm -hmm. so, and good you know deal. what the best part is about this summer? Since we're not offering any guided tours, any pictures you take of the cliff dwellings won't have any people in them. Yeah, yeah, so, that's a good point. Because that, that's something we get complaints about every summer. It's like, hey, I wanted to get pictures without anybody down in <laughs> the cliff dwellings. And there you go. Look <laughs> yeah. on the bright side this yep. summer, you can. Yep, that's a good yeah. point. <laughs> I'll have a good one now. All right, thank you. My pleasure. What do you call that up there, Catfish? Is that a mesa? Is that a tabletop? I don't know what. Is that butte? Or a plateau. Plateau? It's an old fire zone. Not a place to live. Putting all that work into a spot that high. There's your balcony house. Well, there you have it, folks. That is our little adventure here at Mesa Verde National Park. It's not a lot open, but it's still pretty darn cool. What'd you think about it, Catfish? 
I found it interesting how the people just managed to build those house-like structures right on the side of the cliffs. Yeah, it looked really dangerous, didn't it? Yeah. San Juan National Forest. We've had a pretty full day today between the Box Canyon, uh, driving the Million Dollar Highway, Silverton and all, and uh, then getting to hike a bit there at um, Mesa Verde, so it's been a really good day. Now it is time for our nightly routine of trying to find a place to boondock, a little stealth camping. We are in the San Juan National Forest. This is like, this will be the fourth national forest we've camped in on this little trip. site back here. We've already got a truck over there. So it's kind of private but not really. All right we have found our campsite for the night here in the San Juan National Forest. Several sites back here. We've seen only one other person in this little circle. And another good morning to our viewers. Uh, it was a good night's sleep here in the San Juan uh, National Forest. Um, but we are not sticking around to explore it at all. We are heading back out on the road, huh, Catfish? Yes, we are. All right, on the road again. All right, out exploring today. Um, heading really towards more central Colorado. We're still in the San Juan National Forest area and just ran across Chimney Rock National Monument. So from what I can gather, this is a site that's a, a Puebloan site. There's a lot of uh, ruins and kivas and such like that. It's actually believed to be part of the Chaco Canyon civilization found further south down in New Mexico. But with the road being closed, for us to hike up the road to all of those sites, as well as up to the Chimney Rock, be a five mile round trip in fully exposed sun and that is not something we had planned at all so we're just kind of learning about the history and uh, taking in the view real quick. We just ran across this little BLM site. In this particular spot we're in right now, it's called Elephant Rocks. And we are going to do a little off-roading around the rocks. a little exploring real quick. I guess there's a whole bunch of stuff to explore in this area, the BLM area, but uh, we're not going to take too much time, but we thought, hey, that's kind of what we're here for is to explore. Hopefully there's no snakes in these rocks.
Granite Rocks was really cool, and if I had known about them before, I might have added this area as an overnight boondocking site. But this, along with the Chimney Rocks earlier, were completely unplanned stops, so we needed to keep moving on, at least until we ran into our next unplanned stop. We are now on the actual UFO watchtower. More than 230 sightings have actually been spotted, unidentified, from here on this tower. So yeah, we like to joke all the time about UFOs and Bigfoot and all that stuff. But realistically, nobody knows. We've all seen some weird, strange things out there. I told you, I knew Bigfoot was an alien. I think this is a scene out of Alien Autopsy. Well, there you go, the UFO Watchtower here in central Colorado. What'd you think of this catfish? I found it pretty cool. It was really neat. Just the fact that they've had over 230 sightings from this very watchtower. Exactly. And, yeah, and the sightings in this valley go back at least into the 1500s. UFO Watchtower was a cool roadside attraction, but the time we took to visit these places was about to have a devastating effect on our next stop, as the afternoon weather was starting to move in. As you may have guessed, we are in the Great Sand Dunes National Park here in Colorado. And it is very, very windy out here. So we're watching this cloud to our left, because there is rain in the distance. And we don't want to be caught on the sand dunes when the storm hits. Well, we're now caught up here about three-fourths of the way up with some intense wind and rain starting. Yay us! Woohoo! <laughs> this might be the hardest thing we've ever tried to do. What are your thoughts on our little uh, escapade today? The dunes were neat, but I do think we should have went earlier today. Yeah. Well, I think Catfish and I have uh, seen enough sand to last a lifetime after that little adventure there at Great Sand Dunes, huh, Catfish? Yes, we have. Yeah, I think uh, I'll be uh, cleaning sand out of every crack and orifice of my body for the next week or so. <laughs> yeah. Funny that the weather cleared up as soon as we got off the dunes. But that just meant we could move on to our next adventure, which was literally right down the road. Hey fellow expeditionists, we're in the Sangre de Cristo Mountains here in Colorado. We're hiking to Zapata Falls. Zapata Falls, really cool, totally worth the adventure it took to get us up here. I'll tell you what, I have never driven such a rough road. It takes longer to drive the three miles up this road to the trailhead than it took for the whole hike. Entering the Shavano Wildlife Management Area. There's supposed to be dispersed camping here. All right, I think we found us a campsite for the night. Check out the view. The 
Yeah, we have been pretty lucky so far on this trip on finding some mostly awesome spots to uh, stealth camp, disperse camp, whatever you want to call it, on public lands for free. Tonight we're at the Shivano Wildlife Management Area. All right, let's get a look at tonight's dispersed campsite. Oh, yeah. That's a view I can live with. Beautiful morning here. It's probably my only disappointment with all of these amazing dispersed camping places we've got to go to. So we don't really have enough time to stay and truly enjoy it and explore the area. But that is the life of living on the road for two weeks. Hey, fellow expeditionists, we're in Pike National Forest. We're hiking the Crags Trail. Alright, well that was the Crags Trail, hiking up there here in Pike National Forest. What do you think about today's uh, little adventure, Catfish? The rocks were pretty interesting. We kind of had to be careful not to slide on the gravel, but other than that, it was worth it. Alright, well good day so far. Woke up there from our dispersed camping site with those amazing views and a beautiful sunrise. Made it over here to Pike National Forest, their little hike around up to crag the crags that was really neat yeah now i'm trying to get to my next destination there's no connection here my maps won't load even though i can literally look at it on there and see where i want to go and it tells me it can't give me directions with no connection so i'm having to like navigate off of real maps gasp next stop pike's peak After hiking the crags, we decided to do a 14er, the easy way. We drove to Pikes Peak. What we did not know at the time though, is that everything at the summit, the gift shop, the viewing areas, were all under construction. As they are building new facilities, as well as glass viewing platforms, they will be able to walk out on in the future. In the meantime, we had to park at mile marker 16, near Devil's Playground, and take a shuttle the rest of the way up. And if the ranger was in here, I could open my door and we could reach out and pet him. <laughs> Serious, they're gang. They know they can't be hurt here. Where are we at, Catfish? We're at the summit of Pikes Peak. Yeah. yeah Pikes Peak is the easy way to get to the top of the world. If you can drive the majority of the way and then catch a shuttle, to the top. So it is pretty darn cool being over 14,000 feet up here. The only downside right now is we're about a year too early as the top up here is under construction. There's a slightly different view from up here. You can see for miles. Out there is a genuine gold mine. 
Now it kind of looks like they're digging out a pyramid. But I guess last year they pulled in half a billion dollars of gold out of that mine. Us right now is the parking area to catch the shuttle on up to the top of Pikes Peak. The interesting thing is, right in front of us is Devil's Playground. Now, why is Devil's Playground so interesting? Because when Catfish and I hiked the crags this morning, there was a side trail from the same head trailhead that went to the Devil's Playground. This is called the Devil's Playground. It's because this rock here is full of quartzite and metals. So whenever a thunderstorm comes through, it attracts lightning. So that is why this is the Devil's Playground. All right, we have reached the peak. The peak of Devil's Playground. Hey, catfish. Neato. Neato. That's right. I can see my car from here. So that is Pike's Peak, folks. That is the easy way to do a 14er. Take it. Now for the crazy drive back down this mountain. Right, on our nightly search for a place to camp. We are at the Hoosier Pass, which is right on the Continental Divide. Elevation 11,539 feet. And guess what? That's where our camp is going to be at tonight. That's right. County Road 2 is right off to the side. It has some dispersed camping and we are already there. So a couple of Hoosier guys out of our element in the mountains of, of Colorado camping at the Hoosier Pass. Seems fitting. Next destination, Quanberry Peak. Good morning, folks. Uh, last night we camped there at the Hoosier Pass on the Continental Divide, but what I did not mention is that we were camping in the shadow of Quandre Peak. It is a Colorado 14er. And guess what we're attempting to do today? Yeah, that's right. Hey fellow expeditionists, today we are going to attempt Quandre Peak, a 14er in Colorado. This is it, buddy. Yes, it is. We peaked out. High five. Yeah. Where we at, Catfish? We're at Quandry Peak at 14,265 feet. Yeah. Folks, Catfish and I had a great, amazing time climbing that 14er, but it whooped us, didn't it? 
Yes, it did. Yeah, we are tired. So, after getting our uh, celebratory frosties after the hike, we are now out in the Arapaho National Forest, I believe. Yep. And looking for our nightly campsite. Dispersed camping, boondocking, whatever you want to call it. Well, it may not be our best campsite of the trip, but it is a campsite. It is free. We're actually breaking out the tent tonight. This is only the second time on this trip we've uh, slept in the tent instead of in the back of the SUV. But it's not bad. We're going to have a beautiful night sky tonight. Absolutely beautiful. And in the distance down that way, we do have a little mountain view. So, you take what you can get, and this ain't too bad. Good morning, folks. It is 45 degrees, a little bit chilly here this morning in Arapaho National Forest, where we were camped last night. And it is looking like a beautiful morning, isn't it, Catfish? Yes, it does. Yeah, look at that sun. Look at them skies. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Making us some um, scrambled eggs for breakfast today. And I tell you what, we are very slow moving. Between the chill and the air and all the adventures we've been on the past week, we're a little bit wore out, I think. What do you think, Catfish? I agree. <laughs> we all want out. Yep. What'd you think about hiking that 14er yesterday? It was pretty cool seeing the mountain goats and the pikas. Yep. What about the views? I mean... Yeah, those were some cool views. Mm -hmm. Would you say that was one of the most challenging hikes we've ever done? Yes, I would say so. Yeah. That crowd spreader... No, not crowd spreader. Crowd's Vest and Old Rag. That was probably the most challenging? That's what I'd say. Yeah. I would definitely say that doing the 14er was probably the most difficult. It was so rocky and so steep that neither Cloud's Rest or Old Drag come close to the steepness and rockiness. But for adventure, yeah, it's right up there with it. Yeah. All right, folks, we are heading out of our boondocking site here in Arapaho National Forest. Wasn't our favorite site of the places we've been to, but... I mean, every place we've been to is awesome. We're in Colorado. It's hard not to be. Yeah. But this is our final day here in Colorado. So, uh, and quite frankly, we are very tired. Not sure how much we're up for. But we're going to find something scenic to do one last time. Hello, fellow expeditionists. We're in the Boulder Mountain Park in the Chautauqua area. And we're going to hike the Gregory Canyon. Cool beans, man. What about a little adventure there at Boulder Mountain Park on the, the Gregory Canyon Trail? That was a little bit more than I anticipated. We just happened to find it on Google Maps, Gregory Gregory Canyon Trail, and thought we'd check it out. Yep. And it said it was only like a mile long. And we thought, well, we'll go through the canyon, catch one of the side trails to come back as a loop, not realizing that Gregory Canyon was a uh, 1500 foot in elevation gain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After yesterday's 14er, that was a tough one, huh? Yes, it was. Yeah, but you know what? We did it and it had some amazing views, and it was probably a good way to finish our adventure. And we are now on the journey home, back out on I 70, heading east. Hate to do it, but kind of looking forward to crawling into my own bed. How about yep. you, Catfish? All right, well, on the road. Good morning on the road. It's got me to thinking about that. We're always spent the night. All the places we stayed, man. We were in Roosevelt National Forest. Yep. 
Gunnison National Forest, San Juan National Forest, White River National Forest, uh, two nights in different sections in the Arapaho National Forest, one night in the Shibano Wilderness Area, of course we did one night in hotel and this here was our second night in a rest area. So, man, what an adventure, buddy. Yeah. Life on the road is fun and tiring. And I can't wait to do it again. I've been asked a few times, why do we only do day hikes and adventures on these trips? Why no multi-day backpack adventures? And that's a fair question. It's not that we don't want to. In fact, I always pack for it, just in case we do. But we only get to do these big road trips like this once a year, and this is only our third time going west. So what it comes down to is that we want to see as much as possible when we go. It would be amazing to backpack for several days in the backcountry of Colorado, or Yellowstone, or the Pacific Northwest, but there's so much to see. And right now, I don't want to limit myself to backpacking in just one area. My wanderlust has not been satisfied. Not even close. Maybe someday. <laughs>